Um, so thanks uh, for staying on. Um, uh, I'll be quick, try and, try and get us uh, back, back on time. Um, so I'm talking on aerobic degradation processes in active landfill cells. Uh, as Ken said, I'm from the University of Queensland and uh, we have a centre uh, centre there that is supported by uh, Ramondas and, of course, the University of Queensland. Um, Okay, so uh, I'm talking about aerobic degradation processes in landfill. I, I'm not talking about uh, forced aeration that, uh, uh, that John was talking about. I'm talking about uh, aeration processes that, that occur in, in regulatory, uh, regular uh, sanitary landfills. So, um, so air can contact waste either by being entrained with the waste when the waste is placed or uh, air can infiltrate through soil covers, um, uh, uh, through daily and intermediate cover. And uh, for the uninitiated, I've got a cartoon here. Uh, you can see uh, we cover waste with soil, as, um, as, as um, you will have seen in the, um, uh, in, in the flyovers uh, earlier in this session. Uh, and um, with time, uh, we might cover, for example, a, a gas collection pipe um, and uh, air can also be drawn into the landfill because of uh, suction, um, a vacuum drawn on the gas collection pipe which can draw air into the landfill. So, so this process is, um, is, is well acknowledged and infiltrating air uh, will cause methane oxidation in soil covers, and this is well acknowledged, it's, uh, it's widely researched. But it can also cause methane oxidation and composting in the waste layer itself. So these effects are relatively unmeasured. So we, we've made an effort to look particularly at these processes. So why is the extent of aerobic degradation in waste important? Uh, well, it reduces the harvestable methane that we can draw, draw on. And, uh, well, you could also argue it reduces greenhouse emissions. If, uh, if waste is degrading aerobically, there's less methane to emit. And, of course, if methane is produced, it can be oxidised on its way through the soil cover. Uh, but it, also, it can also reduce um, the... It would also reduce the estimated amount of methane production because the Engers model uh, assumes all waste degrades anaerobically except for uh, uh, an allowance for oxidation in the soil cover. 10% uh, of the methane that's not captured can be assumed to be oxidised in the soil cover. But the regulatory models make no allowance for composting, composting of waste. And so uh, if you look at the, uh, the mass balances, one cubic metre of oxygen uptake in the waste, either by methane oxidation or by composting, is equal to the loss of half a cubic metre of methane potential. All right, so what evidence um, uh, do we have for this? So can we measure uh, the full extent of degradation of uh, waste in a landfill by both anaerobic and aerobic processes. So we might measure methane uh, and say, well, the methane potential of the waste is this much. We've captured this amount of methane. The waste has degraded so much. But aerobic oxidation, uh, aerobic degradation, of course, also consumes the waste. Um, and, and, and the obvious thing that we can do to measure these aerobic degradation processes is to measure the uptake of oxygen. Again, as uh, John Jones mentioned, uh, in forced aeration, it's a little bit more subtle, though, in a landfill where we think we don't have or we're preventing air ingress into the waste. So, so can we measure the rate of oxygen? Well, if we can, it's a, a simple and direct approach to measure the extent of aerobic degradation. Uh, uh, with this approach, we've verified this approach in landfill simulations in, in the lab, and uh, 
when you hear the word lab, you think of maybe something small bench scale, but you'll see that we've got something quite grand. Um, and uh, the, the, the cons or the, uh, the, I suppose at this stage, the arguments uh, doing this is that measuring oxygen consumption in fill conditions might be a bit more difficult uh, uh, because we don't have the containment, uh, the, the, if you like, the, uh, the control that we would have in a lab. But let's have a look at, at our efforts so far in, in, in taking these measurements. So how might you measure we, how might you measure the extent of aerobic degradation uh, in, in a landfill? Well, as you're aware of, there are very established methods for measuring methane emissions using what we call static chambers. So these chambers are, are put on the, the surface of the, the landfill, and uh, this is an established technique for measuring the accumulation, the flux of methane and CO2 coming through the surface of the landfill. But, uh, uh, and we can also, it's also well established that we can use these static chambers to measure the extent of methane oxidation in the soil cover with the, the additional uh, information of the amount of, um, uh, uh, the concentration of methane and CO2 at the bottom of the soil cover. But we can go further by applying the same principles by performing instead of, if you like, a mass balance over the soil cover, we can do that over the soil cover and the top uh, sections of the waste, the shallow waste. So exactly the same principles. If we're going to the trouble of distinguishing methane oxidation and composting in shallow waste, uh, we, uh, we can also take isotope measurements. Now, when you hear isotopes, if, if you've not used them before, you might think, well, this is, uh, is quite sophisticated. An isotope can be measured just as easily as methane and CO2. There is a standard uh, equipment to, to measure the C13, what we call, if you like, the heavy carbon version of methane and the heavy carbon version of CO2. So we can measure these, and if you like, there are additional mass balances. We can do a mass balance over methane, CO2, uh, and the heavy isotope or the heavy carbon forms of, car uh, of methane and CO2. And with this information, we can estimate uh, how much uh, composting and methane oxidation is going on in the waste layer, not just the soil cover, but in the waste layer. So we, we could also uh, measure the oxygen uptake in the static chamber, but we, and we are doing that, but we're, we're doing these verification measurements with the isotopes uh, to verify our estimates of uh, composting and methane oxidation in waste. All right, so let's show uh, some uh, pictures. Um, so here's our field site, and this field site's at the Ramondas landfill at Swanbank in, in uh, uh, out towards Ipswich, and um, we're monitoring a finalised batter. So we want to we wanted to monitor a surface that would not be disturbed for a long period of time, to see the trends in uh, in degradation over a long period of time, and um, uh, and we have uh, five static chambers. I would use the pointer here if I knew how to use it. But, uh, oh, that's what's going on. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so here are the static chamber sites, and each site has the spears going. If you, you can see here in my cartoon here, this is the soil. So our spears are going right into the waste mass, and so we're interested in measuring the concentration profiles. Um, we, uh, uh, it's not easy to put these spears in. We needed a excavator to punch them down in through uh, the waste. And here's one of my uh, PhD students, uh, Lizanne Obersky is her name. And here's the static chamber that she's using. And so she's here taking uh, measurements of, concentrate, uh, of CO2 concentrations to measure the CO2 flux in this picture here. And, um, uh, sorry. And, uh, Here's her able assistant, uh, one of my postdocs, uh, Shuang Zi, helping Liz with her sampling. 
And um, when we take the samples of gas from the, uh, from the waste, we make sure that we've got nice short circuiting. So if you draw a suction on a spear, of course, there's a, a possibility that air might be drawn through the soil into the spear. So we put this cap of helium over the top and we try and detect to see if there's any helium in our gas sample. And, and, and so this is just a, a quality control measure. And um, so here's a, an oxygen concentration profile on this batter four months after laying fresh waste. And here is the oxygen concentration. So that's 10%. Uh, so you can see, uh, unfortunately, the, the colouring hasn't come out here, but the soil cover is about a half a metre deep here. So this is within the waste mass. Uh, we've got about 10% oxygen all the way down to a one metre, over one metre below the bottom of the soil cover. We've got uh, oxygen concentrations of the order of 5%. So oxygen is certainly there and um, uh, supporting aerobic uh, degradation. Um, again, um, we, here's our measurement of uh, carbon isotopes. The, the point I want to make here is that the, the, the CO2 isotopes here, the, these, this is a plot of the concentration of the heavy, car, uh, heavy CO2, if you like, and you can see the concentration of heavy CO2, or, or the abundance, uh, uh, is, is constant down through the profile, and that is, sim uh, that is indicative of composting, because uh, co composting does not change the abundance of the heavy CO2 relative to the light CO2, if, if you like. Uh, so, th th so, so these are qualitative indications. We're still going on with our mass balance work here. Um, so this is complemented by uh, laboratory uh, trials and we've got our laboratory reactors here where we're doing these uh, these trials and this is a diagram it's uh, it's quite simple we just measure oxygen coming into a bed of waste so these beds of waste are a, a half meter deep and uh, they're covered with soil so it's a simulation of a landfill and then with the uh, b uh, because sorry we're, we're feeding oxygen in in the headspace here so so that's important. So we're just trying to simulate uh, uh, air, uh, atmospheric conditions above a bed of waste in a sealed container here. So air comes in and it displaces the gas uh, in, 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 the, in the top of the headspace. And we do this periodically, every, um, every 45 minutes for each reactor. And uh, so we can get an exact measure of the, of the carbon dioxide, methane production and the oxygen uh, consumption. And so this is, uh, this is quite um, a novel work here. Uh, so this is a better picture of this system. You can see the pipes going into the headspace and the pipes coming from the headspace uh, to, to, to measure uh, oxygen consumption and, uh, and anaerobic digestion. Uh, there's a dirty component to this. We've got to go and collect waste. So we got real waste. We shredded that and, and we loaded our reactors with this. It's a team effort. Everyone has to pitch in to go and collect waste. Uh, so here's a more diagrammatic representation of these beds. So it's a sealed bed. We've got air coming in, and we measure the carbon dioxide, methane, and air coming out. And uh, here's our bed of waste. Now, so, so I make no claims that this is a true representation of landfill because we just can't physically get the compaction in the lab reactor. Nevertheless, it's an indication that when, you, when we've got waste and we've got it covered with quite a thick layer of soil, uh, we still get a significant amount of, of, of oxygen consumption. Now, if you remember my, remember my rule that one cubic metre of Oxygen is equal to half a cubic metre of uh, methane potential. You can see the total, uh, sorry, the total oxygen consumption there is equal to the methane production, which means one third of the waste 
in this bed here has degraded aerobically. So we, we believe aerobic degradation in shallow waste is extremely important and is, uh, is currently ignored in, in gas estimation models. And so our ultimate aim here uh, is to develop a model with the capacity to, to incorporate atmospheric boundary conditions, to simulate air ingress into shallow layers uh, of a landfill driven by diffusion of oxygen, uh, convection driven by atmospheric pressure fluctuations or excessive draw on gas collection systems or the effect of wind, much like a, a, a wing effect uh, going over the landfill, and to therefore measure anaerobic and aerobic degradation processes. Now, what, so 2 and 3D models are commonplace in environmental engineering with aquifers, reservoirs, but for some reason not in landfill simulations. Uh, uh, the, the, the sophistication of landfill models is, 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 is not at the same level as what we might apply in other uh, multi-dimensional systems. And so GIS, GIS information, as you've seen in the talks up till now, can easily be incorporated, captured, and, and there are models that can easily accept this sort of information. Um, and, uh, and, and so we can take, we can simulate biodegradation in such a model taking into account anaerobic digestion, composting in areas with sufficient oxygen and methane oxidation in soil layers. And, uh, and the, the occurrence of each process, of course, is a function of the oxygen at that point. So in conclusion, aerobic degradation in shallow fresh waste layers is widely acknowledged, uh, but it's not accounted for any prediction of methane generation or greenhouse emissions. Uh, oxygen consumption is a direct measure of aerobic degradation activity and under field conditions aerobic degradation activity can also be measured. We haven't given up on this in measuring in the field but we can also measure it by measuring methane CO2 and uh, the heavy carbon forms of carbon dioxide and methane. Thank you.